And for today's lecture, we're going to focus on this chapter 12, part three. This is on, again on shear strength of soil. And for part three, the focus is on determining the shear strength parameters, this time using this triaxial test. So that's what I'm going to start today. And then also we'll cover some field tests and empirical correlations, and also briefly mention sensitivity of clays. So that's plan for part three. For triaxial test, so this is basically one of the most reliable methods to determine the shear strength parameters. In the previous lecture in part two, we talked about direct shear tests. That's a very commonly used and also a very fast, very economic way to test shear strength parameters. But triaxial tests actually are most reliable methods. So first I want to explain what this triaxial test is and then talk about different types of triaxial tests. On this slide, you're looking at this diagram of uh, triaxial test equipment. So you have your soil specimen at the center. So that's your soil specimen. And this is typically 1.4 inch by three inch or 36 millimeter by 76 millimeter. So it's a cylinder, uh, cylindrical shaped specimen. So if I use SI unit, so this is diameter. This is height. Okay. So that's the dimension of the soil specimen or as I mentioned, 1.4 inch in diameter by three inch in height. And this soil specimen is encased by this thin rubber and placed in this testing chamber. So this is your testing chamber. You can tell from this uh, figure here, this testing chamber is filled with fluid. So you have fluid. And typically it just use water. And the purpose of this fluid is, is to apply confining stress onto your specimen. So this fluid can apply confining stress. And the pore pressure of this fluid is controlled in the test. So you have a cell pressure control. You can control how much pressure you put on the specimen through changing the pore pressure in the chamber. And also you can measure the uh, pore pressure in the chamber. And then this soil specimen is sandwiched between two porous stones. So you have these two porous stones, one on top, one at the bottom. This porous stone also is connected to drainage. So you can measure the pore pressure inside your soil specimen. You have this drainage control and you can control the drainage inside your soil specimen as well. And then you have this axial load on top. And the way to shear, to fail the specimen during your triaxial test is to basically apply this axial load. So you can use both force or stress controlled or displacement or strain controlled. So this axial load is basically uh, one of your uh, principal stresses. Okay. And that's how you basically fail this specimen to failure. And I'm listing here a few of the advantages of triaxial test. So why it's most reliable. First, you can control drainage well. As you can see from this diagram, you can control the pressure and drainage in this chamber. And also you have these pressure measurements and connections for drainage through these two porous stones. So you can control the drainage of your soil specimen. And second, there's no rotation of principal stresses. In the triaxial test, you have this vertical or axial load. So the stress here, this is actually your major principal stress if this is a triaxial compression test. Okay. So that's the larger of the two principal stresses. So that's major principal stress sigma one. And the pressure you applied through that chamber fluid is your confining pressure, that's sigma three. So that's your minor principal stress. So these two principal stresses, they, they will not rotate during the triaxial test. So major principal stress stays on the horizontal plane if it's a compression test. And the minor principal stress is the confining pressure. So it stays on the vertical plane, basically. There's no rotation principal stresses. And therefore, by adjusting the magnitude of these two 
of principal stresses, you can control the stress path of the specimen to failure. So you can mimic what soil undergoes in the field by basically controlling the magnitude of these two principal stresses. And the last advantage of praxial tests is the failure plane can occur naturally. If you recall what we covered in part two, that direct shear, direct shear test, in that direct shear test, soil specimen is forced to fail horizontally. So you have that forced horizontal failure plane. And that's another case for triaxial test. So for triaxial test, soil specimen will fail naturally along the weak plane. So you don't actually force the failure plane. So this is basically the setup of a triaxial test. Next, I'm going to go over the general procedure for triaxial test, and then I'll go over different types of triaxial test. So for a general procedure, we can divide it into basically two stages. So the first stage, stage one here, this is where we apply an hour around confining pressure sigma three. So basically we can change the chamber fluid pressure to apply this confining pressure on your soil specimen. And this is sigma three. And if you keep the drainage closed when applying this all around pressure, the pore pressure inside the soil specimen will increase. So we call that pore pressure UC. And we can define Scampton's pore pressure parameter B as the ratio of UC over sigma three. So that's Scampton's pore water pressure parameter B. In the case I'm showing here on this slide, this is called the isotropic compression. In this case, the vertical stress and the horizontal stress, uh, these two stress values are the same. So I'm applying the same pressure in the vertical and in the horizontal direction. So that's called isotropic compression. And there's also anisotropic compression where you can use a different pressure in the vertical direction. And for saturated soft soils, this Scampton's pore pressure parameter B is typically one, very close to one. In this table here shows the B value, the Scampton's parameter B for typical soils. For saturated stiff soils, this B can be less than one. So if you look at this table here, normally consolidated soft clay, this B value is very, very close to one. And as you move down the table here, so you have lightly over consolidated, over consolidated and very dense and very stiff clays. You see the value of this Scampton's pore pressure parameter B actually decreases. So that's Scampton's parameter B. And that's stage one, applying that all around pressure. The second stage of a typical triaxial test is basically to shear the specimen to failure. So that's the way to do that is to apply a deviator stress. So we have sigma three from stage one. And then we shear the specimen to failure by increasing the deviator stress. So that's uh, what, what we call delta sigma d. So that's a deviator stress applied in the vertical direction or axial direction. And same here. And then we can define these principal stresses. The major principal stress we call sigma one. This is the larger of the two principal stresses. So that's sigma three plus delta sigma d. So that's basically the axial stress in your triaxial compression test. So this is actually sigma one. So all the triaxial tests I'm going to talk about in this class are basically triaxial compression tests. So by default, the larger of the principal stress is in the vertical direction, so sigma one. That's the axial stress. And the minor principal stress is actually your confining pressure. So this is that all around pressure you applied during stage one, so that's sigma three. And divitor stress or shear stress is that delta sigma D. 
And this delta sigma d is basically the difference between these two principal stresses, sigma one minus sigma three. So that's the second stage of a track suit test. This is applying this deviator stress in the axial direction until the soil specimen fails. And we defined these principal stresses, sigma one, sigma three. So that's general procedure of a track, typical track suit test. And then depending on the drainage condition during these two stages, so you can remember, you can control the drainage during track suit test. So depending on what drainage condition you use during these two stages, and there are three common types of track suit test. The first one, consolidated drained track suit test or CD track suit test, consolidated undrained or CU, and unconsolidated undrained or UU track suit test. So these are three common types of track suit test. Uh, listed here, I actually added one more here. This is called unconfined compression or UC track suit test, which is basically a special type of UU test. And I'm going to go over each one of these types in details in this lecture.